Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Investigators say a fire at a Pier Middle School was intentionally set. Officials say it happened at Georgia Morris Middle School just before 11 o'clock Wednesday morning. Authorities say the fire was in a boys' bathroom on the second floor. A captain with Pier Police says the school's resource officer was able to put most of the fire out. The school was evacuated due to the smoke and was closed for the rest of the day. The incident remains under investigation. And part of North Marion Road in Sioux Falls was closed Wednesday morning as police investigate a deadly hit and run from earlier this month. Investigators closed Marion between Madison Street to Benson Road. This is the same area where a 24-year-old man was hit and killed on March 17th. Skyler Yellow Eagle's car got stuck that night. Police say when he got out of his car, he was hit by a pickup truck. At last report, Sioux Falls police were still looking for the driver involved in the deadly hit and run. After three years, a missing person case came to an end this week as authorities confirmed remains found near wound socket are that of Eugene Prince. Kelloland News spoke with Prince's brother who wanted to thank the community. Thank you. Thank you for all the support, for the ones that helped come to searches, for the ones that reached out, for the ones, basically anyone that's followed Eugene's journey over the last three years and our family's journey. Thank you. We can't send enough thank yous to cover everybody. You can hear more from Hotchkiss about the past three years and what the future holds for his family in a Killaland.com original by Jacob Newton online now. And following a six-month OSHA investigation, we have an update on a dairy barn collapse that sent several workers to the hospital. It happened in September near Summit, South Dakota. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, the company responsible for building the structure, Signet Construction LLC, has been issued citations totaling just under $30,000. The company is contesting the citations. The Blooming Valley Dairy was not cited. Now let's get a check of our forecast with meteorologist Scott Munt. A little warm up before things get cold and wintry again, Scott. Yeah, you are correct. We are looking at temperatures today probably hitting the 40s and 50s for, I would say, the southern half of Kettleland. Many locations will come in with numbers in the 40s and 50s this afternoon. Colder in north central and northeastern South Dakota, but temperatures will be above freezing. 34 in Mobridge, 35 in Aberdeen, 32 in Watertown, 52 in Sioux Falls, near 60 today in Rapid City. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. The Brookings School Board has released the settlement documents for the resignation of Superintendent Clint Willard. The board says it has lost faith and trust in Willard's ability to lead the school district. The report includes several pages of concerns from the school board. One involves concerns over a student's mental health. A board member said they never got a response from the superintendent after repeated questions. The report also said the working relationship with the city of Brookings and the school is not where it should be. Members say they also have major concerns regarding the rollout of the competency-based education and the confusion and frustration it has caused. The report also says the superintendent wanted to start committees to investigate several issues, but the board says no committees have been formed. Willard's employment will end June 2nd. He'll receive more than $189,000 in compensation. For Jack's fans, Frost Arena will not look the same when they return next year. As soon as SDSU's last home basketball game wrapped up about a month ago, they got to work with demolition and remodeling. Part of the project will be complete this fall. They're currently in the process of knocking down the entire south wall to make room for the new concourse and suites. Some places are very easy to go through. Um, the codes in 1970 were very different than they are now. Other places we find uh, very extensive structure that we weren't expecting and even in one instance we found an old the top of an old utility pole buried four foot underground that we had to dig out and cut off below our grade so they expect to be completely done with the project by fall of 2024 the SDSU graduation ceremonies in May will be moved to the Swiftel Center because of the renovations the dairy industry is on full display in Sioux Falls the Central Plains Dairy Expo opened its trade show yesterday at the Sioux Falls Arena and Convention Center. The two-day event features 272 exhibitors from 35 states and four countries, showcasing new products, services, and technologies for farmers and ranchers. 
So it gives them one place to go during the off season when hopefully they're not really busy where they can come and learn about everything that they need uh, as far as products, education, and some of the newer technologies. The Central Plains Dairy Expo continues today. There's a free pancake breakfast beginning at 8 a.m. while the trade show is open from 8 to 3. The finalists have been named for the 2023 James Beard Awards. One of the restaurants in South Dakota has made the cut. Sanaa Aberesk with Sanaa's Gourmet Mediterranean in Sioux Falls, a nominee for the best chef in the Midwest. She and Joseph Rainey of Scogan Kitchen and Custer were named as semifinalists a few months ago, but only Sanaa made it to the final round. The James Beard Restaurant and Chef Awards will be held in Chicago at the beginning of June. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, weather update. Here we go. We've got uh, tomorrow, well, winter storm watches for possible blizzard conditions. As we watch the latest developments in weather, make sure you're staying up on the forecast today all the way from the northern Black Hills, clear over into western Minnesota and points in between. Obviously, we'll see some of these counties uh, likely upgraded to warnings uh, probably a little later today. Uh, and then also some of these may be converted over to advisories, depending on how the heaviest snow develops here. The other thing to remember tonight, uh, we do have a risk of some thunderstorms. Even a couple of these might produce some hail. Uh, we still think that that's in the mix here of the conversation. The best chance of thunderstorms will be a little south of Sioux Falls, running up Yankton and probably just to the Sioux Falls area. So that's a new thing. And obviously when we see some lightning, it makes us think of spring at least a little bit. Have a look at the temperature spread today. What a challenge. Sioux Falls, it's a close call. You know, there's a lot of data trying to keep us in the low 40s, but at the same time, we've got a couple of uh, things that are tugging us closer to 50. So we'll stay optimistic and try to head that direction. The more sunshine, the better. If these clouds thicken up this afternoon, that'll really shut down the warming. But if you're in Yankton and Vermilion, a lot better chance of seeing those 50s and even a couple of 60s. Meanwhile, the northeast, you're in the 30s today. Not going to be a warm day in Aberdeen and Watertown. That northeast wind will be gusty this evening. And look at those thunderstorms coming in line in the southeast. Meanwhile, western South Dakota will start to pick up snow after midnight. That'll be kind of that first bam. It may be a little quiet in between, but also I do want to mention that some freezing drizzle or some mixed precip could be ongoing north of Sioux Falls early tomorrow morning. So just keep a watchful eye on all of these things that are kind of sandwiched together here. This ensuing blizzard talk is probably going to revolve around this in central South Dakota late tomorrow morning into the afternoon. So between 10 a.m. and 2 o'clock, the weather's going to deteriorate quite a bit in central South Dakota. You do have some uh, freezing rain possibilities on the front end of this, too, around Huron to Watertown, maybe Clark. That seems to be popping up a little bit more, too. And then watch that snowfall and the snow rates late tomorrow afternoon between Pier and Aberdeen could be quite hefty. Miller, we're going to pick on you. Chamberlain could get uh, quite a, a dose of snow here. Sioux Falls is on the lower end, but Sioux Falls mid-evening could get kind of nasty too with that wind out of the north, northwest at probably 20 to 45, pretty likely. So even an inch or two of snow can create some hazardous travel. There's that heavy snow band right now. We're going to start that around Winter and Chamberlain and try to route that up toward Aberdeen. That's where a lot of the data is kind of settling. Could somebody get a foot of snow in there? Absolutely, it's possible. But a lot of that hinges, too, on these big storms with that severe weather coverage in eastern Iowa and Illinois. That conveyor belt of moisture, we have to watch that. And then we'll see what we actually get on the backside of this. But certainly these late March storms, doesn't take much and it's pretty volatile. So we'd rather at least give you some heads up there that you're going to have to be ready for the weather. Here are the highs today. Those 50s in the far southeast, 30s in the north. The uh, extended forecast starting with tonight. We're down in the 30s in Sioux Falls, even though we'll have lightning and thunder in the region. And then tomorrow, northwest winds will increase across the board. I think Aberdeen will be easily 30 to 50 
in the afternoon. Sioux Falls seven days, so we're going to clear out that snow late Friday night. Saturday will open up to an okay day. 40, um, I'm comfortable with that. Sioux Falls could get into the 50s on Palm Sunday, but then next week, another storm in the Midwest, and that one could be every bit as strong as this one, if not stronger. And uh, a lot of questions on exactly where the storm tracks will be. There could be easily a band of heavy, wet snow on the backside of the low. So right now, if you're watching us in Aberdeen, Pier, and Rapid City, I'm much more inclined to say you're going to be on the winter side of this storm next week. And that could be quite a doozy. So uh, just a heads up, we're trying to sort all this out here in the Storm Center. Take a look at our latest weather update. We've got some new information for you online at kebbleland.com.